We are back in front of the computer doing a little bit more CAD work for this week. My shop is a complete mess right now. I'm working on another project in there for a company and it has taken over the entire space. So getting to the frame and taking the next set of measurements off of it is going to be a little bit difficult. But I do have measurements from last week pertaining to the suspension mounts in the rear and the bed mounts. So this week we're going to go ahead and throw those into the model. Let's start by opening up Inventor, loading the frame, and start adding those features. With the frame open, the first thing I need to do is add all the remaining points that we measured from the first day. And those are the rear leaf spring points and all of the bed mount points. With all those points laid out, the first bracket I'm going to work on is the front leaf spring mount. To begin with, we're going to kind of throw together a simple profile of what it would look like if we were looking directly at the side of it. And that way I can get a rough idea of what the bracket's going to look like. One thing I do know is that the inner width of the leaf spring mount is wider than the width of the rail. So there's going to need to be a small bend in it. So with that said, the first thing I'm going to do inside the part is create a rough idea of what that angle would look like with the two important dimensions. And with that sketch done, we're gonna call this the control skeleton. Um, everything else will be derived off of this. So when I need to change anything, I can just change to this skeleton and everything will be manipulated correctly. So we're gonna create the first face of the sheet metal part. And then off of the face face, I'm going to add a flange and in the skeleton I have an angle and I'm going to use that angle to control the angle of the flange and I'm going to add the dimension of the leg to the skeleton and then use that to control the length of the leg. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the wider part that the leaf spring will actually sit in. Now that I've massaged the skeleton and got it the way I want it, the next step is to add the profile to this. So I have the dimensions of the profile from the other sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and throw them into here. And I'll do an extrude and then make it cut and there's the bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of little fillets and then mirror the part. And there's my first bracket. Now that the bracket is complete and mirrored, I can throw it into an assembly. So I start a new assembly. I'm going to place the frame in as the main model and then I'm gonna add two brackets. To get those brackets in the right location, I need to go back to the frame model and add point work features so I can constrain the brackets to those work features so that I know they're in the right place. So with those created, back into the new assembly, I'm gonna constrain the bolt hole with the point, add a face constraint, add a second face constraint, and then repeat the process for the other bracket. And 
that is what the first bracket looks like in the frame. Now, when you're modeling things like this, there are different frames of mine. One frame of thought is to just do all of the brackets and all the features and everything inside of one part. So you have one part that has all the information in it. And that is definitely a valid way to do it. But for this particular instance, it isn't the way that I wanna do this one. From my experience, it's better to model things as accurately to the manufacturing process as you can. What I mean by the manufacturing process is if two parts are bolted together, you make two parts, fasten them together with a bolt. If it's an assembly that's welded together, each individual sheet of metal is its own part, and then you put those together and then you can add welds in the assembly if you want to. This bracket is a flat sheet of metal that's cut out on a machine and then bent. And to get to that information in one part that has everything in it, you have to do a little bit of trickery to get what that profile looks like. In this model, I literally open up the part, since I made it a sheet metal part, I don't know if you noticed that, um, I can just tell it to do a flat pattern. It'll create a flat pattern of what that bracket will look like. I can cut it out by hand, or hopefully on a machine in the future, and then I can use a press to bend it, and then I have a bracket that'll go into my weld jig, and then I can weld it in place. So with the front bracket done, I can start working on the next bracket, and that's going to be the rear mount point for the leaf spring. And that is a tube that is welded on with two sheets. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a profile sketch in the frame, and then I can open up a new part, and then do all of the real geometry inside of this part. One thing I'm gonna do a little bit different is instead of making each individual part its own, I'm going to tell the program to create different bodies for each part. That way inside of one part, I have three bodies. And then that still allows me to make a quick drawing of just one of those bodies so I can cut them out on a machine. Now that those are done, I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in the assembly in the right place by sending a constraint of the tube to the rear point and then adding a constraint to the faces to lock it in place. Now here I noticed that the frame and the width of the brackets were not correct. So I ran out and actually measured the width of the frame in a couple places and it came out to be 2.63 inches, which is I think about 80 millimeters. Um, so I'm going to adjust the frame and that means I'm gonna have to go back and adjust the two brackets And since the first one I created that skeleton I have to go back into the part edit the skeleton tell it to rebuild and then it'll fit to the new dimension With the brackets in place and the frame and the brackets to the right dimension, I'm going to start just adding a bunch of the other small details to the frame, like a couple holes that I know are in the back end. Um, I know that the frame opens up on the inside so that you can easily attach the bumper brackets. And once I have all those details, I can look at it and realize that I have an issue with one of the brackets. Uh, this isn't a huge issue, it's a quick fix. All I need to do is open up the part inside the assembly and then I can modify the sketch, change this dimension from three to two inches and then tell it to finish the sketch and then return back to the main assembly. And that's what the four brackets for the suspension look like. The last bit I wanna do for this week is add the remaining points that locate the bed and for now, I don't have all the dimensions because I'm missing the dimensions off of the center. For these particular points, I'm going to add a really quick representation of what the parts look like on the frame. And then as I get those details later down the road, I can come back and tweak these models to make them work the way they need to.
Alright, and there we have it. All of the rear suspension brackets and bed mount brackets are added to the frame. And next week, depending on the condition of my garage, I'll be working on the front suspension bracket or I'll be working on the midsection of the frame which has the cab mount and a couple cross braces in it. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. If you want to support me and my channel, go ahead and read the short paragraph in the description. I'm going to save this and close down Inventor. In the meantime, I hope you all go out, do something fun, do something enjoyable, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.